I'm Richard McCoy. I'm the director of Landmark Columbus, uh, a program of Heritage Fund. And we are almost to our last session um, of the inaugural symposium, Foundations and Futures. Um, and just to recap again, uh, Exhibit Columbus is an annual exploration of architecture, art, design, and community. It's a new and ambitious effort that will alternate programming between symposium and exhibition years. And so we're almost finished with the symposium. We're going to end talking about what is the exhibition for 2017. Um, and, but first, I would like to again thank the founding sponsors of Exhibit Columbus, who have very generously supported the project. Um, you can see them listed here, and they really represent the spirit that makes Columbus great, the spirit to contribute to a big idea, to take a risk, and to try and chase excellence. These folks are supporting Exhibit Columbus because they think it will continue to make this visionary community a great place to live, work, learn, and play. And so I thank them very much. Um, also, I'm extremely grateful to the College of Architecture and Planning at Ball State University who have been uh, recording all of the sessions uh, for the entire symposium. We're looking forward to seeing those and we'll have them all online soon. Uh, likewise, Indiana University has been a supporter of this project since the beginning. I thank Ball State University and Indiana University. And so it's, that's not, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna invite up the Exhibit Columbus curatorial team in just a minute, but before that, I'm going to invite up uh, Tracy Souza and Rick Johnson, two members of the community. Tracy is the president of the Heritage Fund, and Rick Johnson owns Johnson Ventures to talk a little bit about this project and its benefit to the community. Tracy and Rick. Well, good afternoon and, and welcome. Um, I am Tracy Souza with Heritage Fund, and I am joined by uh, Rick Johnson. Um, the, you know, the Community Foundation has uh, many, many roles, and one of the hats we wear is to really try to model community values and the uh, characteristics that have made so many things work in this really great community. So things like collaboration and public-private partnership and forward thinking. And I think that this project is a terrific example of some of that work it's around, around forward thinking. And, you know, in, in the future, when's the best time to, to plant a tree? And, you know, that would have been 10 years ago. That's really, that thinking is really the kind of stuff that has made Columbus work. So, so two years ago, a small group of us, um, uh, a small unqualified group of us, uh, no, no designers or, or architects. We had a guy from Coca-Cola bottling and a venture capitalist, and I do foundation work and teach yoga lessons. And, and so we sat together in a room and we heard a really exciting idea uh, about a biennial and, and a celebration of architecture and design and, and community. And we kind of said to ourselves, is, can we make this work? Uh, this is, sounds like a right idea. It sounds like it really fits the values of, of this community and reflects what we want to know about ourselves. And we started bringing in other folks to test the idea. And, and um, uh, you know, along the way, I guess we convinced ourselves, obviously, that this was something that, that, that we could do. But I really think that it would not have come to this place if it hadn't have been for a group of early believers. And I see a number of them sitting in the audience, and I am standing next to one, and he wouldn't call himself an early believer, but I, I still think he, he is and he was. So I will let Rick tell you a little bit about some of the uh, 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 criteria that he put forward. Sure, thanks, Tracy. Uh, well, uh, I always, whenever I'm thought of as a believer, I always cringe a little. I hate to say that from here, because uh, I don't mean that. But, <laughs> but, uh, but I approach things as a skeptic. Uh, but, uh, but, but I'm happy to be an investing skeptic. Uh, so if we think about the benefits to, to the community, I always just think about, well, where are we today? Uh, and how do we move forward from today? And clearly, Columbus, as we know, is, uh, is a small Midwestern city where we have uh, all the challenges of every small Midwestern city. But we're different in a few ways. And we are different in that we have a higher aspiration. We believe that we can do more and be more. Uh, we have a, uh, a desire for excellence. 
We have a long heritage of, heritage of excellence that's been given to us by those who came before us. So we think about those things, and those are the things that really make us different. In Columbus, we're forward thinking, but we're forward thinking in a way that's collaborative. We have, again, that long history of public-private collaboration, and in a situation where we are really uh, genuinely interested and welcoming of differing ideas. So that sets Columbus apart. We also approach things with kind of a Midwestern humbleness. Uh, I think of it as uh, no ego and all about community. So when we come together to work, we really are about the community as a whole. So with that as a backdrop, uh, and as an investor in this project, uh, how do we think about uh, some very tangible things that might be outcomes of Exhibit Columbus? And I think there are many. And it comes from the differing positions that uh, differing people might have in the community. If I'm the Chamber of Commerce or a merchant here, I'm probably thinking about visitors, uh, about people eating in restaurants and sleeping in beds. If I'm the visitor center, I probably think that because that's my role, but I also think about the overall brand of this community and how I make it stronger. And clearly, architecture uh, is, is almost synonymous with the brand of this community. And this is an opportunity to strengthen that and bring it into today. Uh, as we think about that, uh, uh, that brand, uh, that it, it really, I think, uh, though, as we think about it, it isn't the architecture, but it really that architecture is an exhibition of uh, our feel that we're committed to excellence and we can, we can play a role in our community and in our own lives to create the future we want to create. So the architecture really is that outward, uh, that outward sign of a community spirit that's different. So can Exhibit Columbus be a part of growing that? And as investor, I would say yes. If I'm working with economic development, what would I think? Could this be part of the story of why businesses might join this Columbus community, new businesses? If I'm a current employer, employer could I say, could this be a part of how I could recruit and make interested some really creative talent to move into Columbus? Or could I take the talent that's in my current business and inspire them to do just a little bit more? You heard from some students earlier. Can we involve the entire community, including our young people, to have that little higher aspiration? Can we all be just a little bit better? So I think those are some tangible things that, uh, that clearly we can think about that this Exhibit Columbus might do for all of us. So for the funder's perspective, how will we measure success? How would we measure success? It's a venture investment. This was an idea, and it's still an angel style of investment very early. It's unproven. It's unknown. I am a skeptic, but I'm an investing skeptic. And I think we can do a lot of things. But what do we really want as investors? And I think we want the people involved with Exhibit Columbus to really show an excellent form of, uh, of implementation. And I think our real request is, can you help make us better? Us as individuals and us as a community. And if Exhibit Columbus can help move us along the path of taking design as a base where we have a great platform and move forward so that all of us are better, the investors will all be very happy. Thanks, Rick and Tracy. That was really great. Um, but one evidence that I have that the project is already working is that in one of the Miller Prize finalist uh, panel discussions last night, Joyce Shang, I think, said um, something that caught uh, Will Miller and I's ear. We were sitting together later in the evening, and she said, I get it. This community isn't really just about one person leading the way. It's the community is when, when the, a group comes together to do something and it becomes bigger than one person. I, am I right, Joyce, you say that last night? It was impressive that you got that within uh, about a day and a half of being in Columbus because it usually, when folks come to Columbus, um, you tell sort of the great American, great one man theory. And there is a, a great man that lived here, but I think that oftentimes um, that notion gets overplayed and it really is about the community. So I'm, I'm proud to be here. I'm, I'm going to now uh, invite up the Exhibit Columbus curatorial team and start with Ann Sirac. And as Brooke Hawkins joins the stage, 
Um, I would like you all to give her a round of applause because uh, she is the, uh, the hardworking brains behind this project. Brooke Lee, come on up. We all know Kelly Wilson and Janice Shimizu and Josh Kogashaw. Hi, hey, Josh. Aaron Hetrick and Will Marquez. Um, the silent force behind it, Jonathan Neshi. Yeah. We also have another member who's hard at work, and unfortunately, we're going to keep him hard at work because he takes beautiful photographs, Mr. Hadley Fruits. And so uh, we have one other per person listed on the team, and that's actually our graphic design firm, Thirst. And so they've made us look great and smart and have uh, a brand that matches our aspirations. In many ways, I think they're the first part of the exhibition of 2017. It gives you a sense of what we're trying to do. They went back and looked at the history of Columbus and graphic design with Paul Rand and Alexander Girard and Rudolf de Herrick, and they brought it forth today. And so we have a lot of great examples for that. So uh, they're not here right now, but uh, Thirst is definitely uh, in our minds all the time. So thanks. And I'm going to now turn it over to Anne Surratt. Good afternoon, everybody, friends, colleagues, students, and neighbors. Thank you all for attending Exhibit Columbus's inaugural symposium, Foundations and Futures. This weekend, we've talked a lot about Columbus's rich history and stewardship. And I invite you back next fall to experience an amazing exhibition. The beautiful thing about our inaugural exhibition that opens on August 26, 2017, is that we've created projects that are designed to include all of you. And our hope is that Exhibit Columbus will offer something that speaks to every one of you in a unique way. This exhibition brings in the best of architecture, art, and design to interact with some of the best things Columbus has to offer. Our schools, our architecture, our art, our city center, and our community. This exhibition will be a celebration of Columbus's commitment to making its city a great place to live, work, and learn. Oh, I'm forgetting my slides. Sorry, guys. Um, for three months next fall, Exhibit Columbus will introduce more than 15 installations throughout downtown Columbus and one at North Christian Church. In the following presentations, the Exhibit Columbus curatorial team will introduce you to the J. Irwin and Xenia S. Miller Prize competition that will take place along Fifth Street, the Washington Street installations, the university installations between Central Middle School and Lincoln Elementary School, the BCSC High School project at the LHP Historic Post Office, and the IU Center for Art and Designs project at North Christian Church. Each component of the exhibition is designed to touch upon a unique aspect of Columbus, its design heritage, and the community. At the heart of Exhibit Columbus's curatorial premise is I.M. Pei's Cleo Rogers Memorial Library and the Library Plaza, which contains Henry Moore's large arch. Pei connected his designs to this building, First Christian Church, with a composition that so successfully defines public space that it has been at the center of this community for more than 40 years. It is one of those magic places that has sent a message to the entire world that this place matters. Exhibit Columbus will explore a similar relationship of augmentation and extension of art and design at each of the historic sites all of which are rich in design history and achievement. The idea of civic consciousness and community engagement are especially important considerations to Exhibit Columbus and were a cornerstone for many of the Miller families and so many other families' intentions for their patronage in Columbus. In short, Exhibit Columbus is a way for us to define what's next 
and to tell the world again how this visionary community of Columbus is putting the value of good design to new and innovative use. What happens after we do this? We believe that this project will make a transformative impact upon this community, and especially in three key areas, design, fabrication, and education. Now I would like to introduce you to the members of our team, which Richard has done, and invite them to come up and explain in depth each of the components of our inaugural exhibition that opens August 26, 2017. This city <clears throat> is recognized by its unique collection of nearly 70 buildings of modern architecture, landscape, art, and interior design. The conversation about design in Columbus is a unique one involving individuals and studios from across the United States that have contributed to this composition. Through the act of modern architecture, uh, though the act of modern architecture in Columbus began with Eliel Saarinen from Cranbrook, central, north, east, and west coast designers from many decades were all part of the contribution of modern architecture within the city. Their cumulative work in Columbus can be seen to have had uh, to have been initiated by a remarkable discussion about modern design and its origins, revealed yesterday in our talk with Marlene Newman and research from uh, the work done on Harry Weiss. We learned that Columbus is also part of an international trajectory emanating, beginning from the Midwest. It should be recounted that uh, one of the most important portfolios of modern design uh, the Wasmuth Portfolio was published uh, in 1910 in Holland of the work of Chicago architect Frank Lloyd Wright. This portfolio travels to Paris and, and, in, and is also reprinted in Germany, it influences a host of early moderns, Le Corbusier, Schindler, Neutra, Mies van der Rohe, Walter Gropius, and Peter Behrens, to name a few of the famous who were influenced by this publication. Andre Lachat, a French architect associated with this early modern movement, simultaneously proposed unique theories about modern architecture's purpose with the idea uh, of traveling to Russia, which he did, and in Finland by way of Ilyos Saarinen, similar conceptions with the idea, purpose, and trajectory of modern architecture were equally entertained. A return, in a sense, to the Midwest through Eliel Saarinen brought this conversation here to Columbus again, a tradition that was to have an effect on subsequent additions of art and design to the city. Exhibit Columbus is purposed to join and project this very tradition. The concept of utilizing the modern monuments as sites for locating extraordinary contemporary art and design gives Exhibit Columbus a unique position. The proposals we seek from the Miller finalists for their sites are not imagined to be conceived without the power of place to inform them. We see the opportunity for our finalists to create a purposeful dialogue with their host sites, their formal, historical, and intellectual concepts engaged to the ideas stretching this conversation into new arenas of thought not dissimilar to Christian, to Columbus and to First Christian made by I.M. Pei with the Bartholomew County Public Library and its attendant plaza. Here, in that plaza, a cascade of interwoven relationships underscores the idea to generate from this Midwest grid a civic consciousness expressed by the generation of a public space and the brilliant positioning of a public sculpture. Attendant buildings of its site are linked into remarkable acts of complicity towards making something wholly new of and for the city. We envision our finalists engaging the city through their sites, located by the sheer density of them in downtown Columbus. There's Columbus. That is almost all of the modern projects that you see distributed throughout the city. The greatest density of them is here, downtown, which is why we chose the collection. Oh, with one exception up there, that's North Christian, which is going to be part of this project too. 
We chose an alignment along Washington Street, thus producing our map of their locations. We do this for three basic values. Reinvest in this value of good design as a community leadership, propel Columbus to be a leader in design education, and to grow Columbus as a center of innovation through fabrication. Uh, we don't need to go through that again. I'm not making you do this twice. This is not a test. Totally my fault. <laughs> so, I'd like to introduce the Miller Prize finalists, and I'm going to go through their sites uh, and who is on the sites. So, from Mill Race Park, designed by Michael Van Valkenburg, we'll have Benjamin Aranda and Chris Lash of Aranda Lash, and Rachel Hayes, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And this is approximately the site, uh, although uh, this is up for negotiation with the site owners. At the Cummins Corporate Office Building by Kevin Roach, we have Erwig Baumgartner and Scott Uryu of B Plus U, and Joyce Chang and Bimal Mendes of Plan B Architecture and Urbanism. And that is the approximate location of their site you see rendered in pink in the plan. At the Irwin Conference Center, by Eero Saarinen and Associates, Benjamin Ball and Gaston Nogues, no, 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 excuse me, no gays. Uh, Bonoge Studio of LA will be uh, uh, a finalist with Dwayne Oler, 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 excuse me, Oler and Jenny Wu of Euler Wu out of LA. And you see their approximate site location behind the bank and even uh, including the Green Garden. At the Bethlehem County Public Library of I.M. Pei will be Sharon Johnston, Mark Lee, and Jonathan Olivares. Uh, and with, on that side also is Yugon, Yugon Kim of IKD. And you see the approximate location given to them for their site. Then finally, for the First Christian Church by Elio Saarinen, Chris Cornelius of Studio Indigenous, and Eric Howler and Mijing Yoon of Howler and Yoon will be working on that site, which turns the corner of the uh, grass uh, along Fifth Street. <clears throat> I'd like to ask our Miller Prize finalists to ascend to the stage so you may be recognized by the community and to get a photograph. Columbus, I give you the Miller Prize finalists. Look at our future. Thank you. You may retain your papers. <laughs> now it's the fun part that they've been waiting for. We've dragged this out as long as we could. <laughs> <laughs> so as you know, <clears throat> uh, in December, <clears throat> our finalists will return with their design proposals, and they will be presenting uh, at least to a, to a jury who will pass, render a decision about which schemes are preferred for which sites, uh, for their sites. We thought we would switch off to make it fun, so you go first. Here we go, Sean Anderson of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Lee San Couture of Asymptote Architecture. Jennifer Dunlop Fletcher from the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. And Young No of August Editions. This uh, is our Miller Prize jury. And we're pretty happy about that. <laughs> we're excited. <So. laughs> And now I will talk about the Washington Street installations. Uh, the Washington Street installations will explore ways in which the universal language of design can enrich our lives and enhance a connection to place and community. As noted in yesterday's panel discussion, Making and Maintaining, 
there is a long history of planning, and in particular master planning, downtown Columbus. Lawrence Sheridan completed the first master plan in 1949. Alexander Girard envisioned a unification design scheme for Washington Street called Columbus's Main Street in 1965. SOM produced plans in the late 60s and early 80s, and Paul Kennan and Robert Venturi worked on the city center in the 80s and the 90s. Many cities have a main street or a town square that acts as its heart center. Columbus, Indiana's essence can be found on Washington Street. The Cummins office, the family's bank, and the offices of Irwin Management were once located on Washington Street behind two of the storefronts refurbished by Gerard. As J. Irwin Milder told a writer from Esquire magazine, I like the base of contact on Main Street. That's why I don't have my office out at the plant. I keep it down here, a sense of being part of Main Street, I suppose. Washington Street is the physical embodiment of this community, a symbol that continuously transforms to meet the needs of its people. While many of Exhibit Columbus's installations will be set within the context of specific architectural sites, the Washington Street installations are meant to use the physical context of the streetscape to connect this idea of Main Street to the spirit of our community. Five galleries have been invited to participate in Exhibit Columbus's Washington Street installations. Uh, Jack Gallery in London, Etage Projects from Copenhagen, Manira in Brussels, Patrick Parrish Gallery, New York, and Volume Gallery, which is based in Chicago. Each represents an international body of design and art practices, all making powerful impact in the world of design. We recognize that these five galleries reflect the globalization of society as well as the evolving population of the Columbus community. Following the design traditions of Columbus and the spirit of the Cummins Foundation Architecture Program, we've asked each gallery to select a designer from their roster who they feel will be most inspired to create work based on this call. <clears throat> Create a new object or experience that is designed to increase human interaction and connection on a public street. Connect emerging and contemporary trends in design in the commercial core of Columbus. Create unexpected ways for the community to have conversations around the function and importance of design in the day their day-to-day -day lives. We've asked the galleries and their selected designers to be aligned with this statement by Paola Antonelli of MoMA. Design expands our understanding, not only as a creative discipline, but also as a cultural translator, social lubricant, and interface between progress and humanity. In the effort to capitalize and build upon the potential of Columbus and its unique design heritage, Collaboration with these five galleries will reintroduce Columbus to a new conversation about the value of good design as it can relate to experiences in everyday life and on a scale in which we relate to each other. And now we will hear from the University Installation Coordinators, Josh Kagashell and Janice Shimizu. So the citizens of Columbus have always believed in and invested in education. The Cummins Foundation Architecture Program pushed for the very best buildings that represented the values of the community. The relationship between education and architecture began with a discussion with Ilya Saarinen and at Cranbrook. From there, Saarinen designed um, the very first modern church in the United States, which we're sitting in. And we're interested in how Exhibit Columbus can partner with these traditions and values to build a university network that would showcase cutting edge work being done in schools. So academia is supported by advanced fabrication equipment, research grants, and curricula that are focused on learning through making. This could be a catalyst for new design approaches and the potential to practice here in the middle. So the um, man with the hat is Ilio. Um, to his left is his son, Arrow. And um, the man with the camera is Charles Eames, who designed the pews that you're sitting on. So imagine once a year, five to 10 of the leading architecture schools located here in the Midwest gathering in the context of Columbus. Working within the city's enlightened design legacy, inspired students would discuss, debate, project new ideas of design, architecture, and the built environment. 
with an entrepreneurial spirit that echoes the early parameters of Columbus's living laboratory that will tap into new knowledge being produced in the region and test our ideas in real time. These are the universities uh, currently involved with this symposium and next year's exhibition. So the goals of the university installations are to inspire the next generation to invest in the value of good design by providing real-world enrichment of design education for both university students and Columbus School students. To showcase creative research projects that are developed through making while being connected to the historical precedent of Columbus and contemporary discourse. To develop and expand a regional education network committed to the future of critical design practice and dedicated to strengthening the identity of the Midwest as a unique center of design and fabrication. So the five universities um, participating this year is Ball State University from Muncie, Indiana, the Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio, University of Cincinnati from Ohio, University of Kentucky in Lex Lexington, and the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Oops. So the Curatorial Steering Committee is grateful to these universities for their involvement and their support. So each school has been given a design brief, but the individual instructors will define a framework for the studio project. And we're very excited to see what the students will produce next year. So in addition to the five architecture schools, Indiana University will have a senior in interior design studio led by designer in residence, Jang Mei Wu, to develop and assemble a site-specific temporary installation. And the site for the Indiana University studio will be North Christian Church by Eris Arnon, completed in 1964. So this studio will explore the boundary between art and design through materiality, surface, and assembly in response to the architectural uh, design of Eris Arnon and the landscape architecture of Dan Kiley. The studio will also exercise a sustainable design practice by considering the entire life cycle of the installation, from its material sourcing, construction, and usage, through its material recycling and disposal. The university installations will be developed and designed within the studio. Excuse Richard, me. you said that wasn't going to show up. <laughs> no. Go back a little bit. No. The university installations will be developed and designed within the studio environment. The design studio defines the core of the architectural education experience. It inspires innovation and provides rich opportunities for a dialogue between critical thinking and making. Ideas relating from the purely disciplinary to the impact of social and environmental justice are discussed, drawn, and constructed. All of these universities involved have a deep understanding that tradition is a living thing. It can be nudged, adjusted, or hit with a blunt object. The applied research being produced at the universities can be seen as a hinge between the academic and the professional. It is a co-production between the students and the faculty. Capitalizing on youthful energy, these projects can be seen as relevant, raw, and most importantly, making impactful contributions to the history, community, legacy, and understanding of Columbus. So the university installations are located along Fifth Street, known locally as the Avenue of the Architect. It'll be to the east of the Miller Prize installations. And looking from above, you can see um, we're here in First Christian Church, across the street from Pays Library. And then the university installation site is located down the street between two schools. On the left is the Lincoln Academy, designed by Gunnar Burkerts in 1967. And on the right is Central Middle School by Perkins and Will, built in 2007. So the university installations will be located along the pedestrian strip that divides the two schools. So these projects should represent the state of architectural education in the Midwest, as well as speculate on possible trajectories of the discipline. These temporary installations have the potential to change the way we design and build here, um, to enhance partnerships between designers and manufacturers, and to expand design literacy through education. The university installations are designed to be temporary, three months transformation of the site that highlights the relationships between education, design, and fabrication. Imagine students walking out of school every day to experience new structures being assembled on their lawn. And next August, the university students will be presenting their work to the community at the opening of Exhibit Columbus. So our hope is that Exhibit Columbus and all of its participants will advocate for the Midwest on the importance of an enlightened design scene. We hope that Columbus can be used as a living example of how one small city can change perceptions and trajectories of a region. Let's compare the Midwest to a country of equal size and population. Let's call that country Spain. Uh, both are roughly equal in area and population. Spain, a recognized distinct culture and place, known for its food, its architecture, and its landscape. Spain is currently the third, 13th largest world economy in the, uh, in the world based on GDP. If our, country was, if our region was a country, we'd be the eighth largest economy in the world with almost double the production of Spain. 
So, where do these 45 million people live? Um, on the wall, you can see the top 20 metro areas in the Midwest with eight cities uh, with a million or more people. Within 500 miles, 50% of the U.S. population is linked by a network of highways, trains, and waterways. Imagine the educational impact this could have. Imagine the symbiotic benefits to Columbus and the region. Design thinking and mass customization cannot be easily outsourced. The hope is that Exhibit Columbus might act as a catalyst for change in how we educate, design, fabricate, and build our region as a center, not only for engineering, but for design thinking as well. So, I guess we'll go to that one. Jaron Miller's vision for a strong community in which the best young families anywhere would like to live. A community that is open in every single respect to persons of every race, color, and opinion. is based on providing the best education, creating genuine cultural interests, and establishing exceptional opportunities for recreation. And this has been echoed and supported by so many here in Columbus through their actions and their words. Exhibit Columbus and the university installations speaks to all three of these goals with a focus on the placemaking of Columbus founded on the connection between the livability of a community and enhanced civic engagement, opportunity for creative expression, and job and revenue growth. This type of investment cannot be underestimated in terms of the lasting difference it can make in the design and fabrication of the built environment and the education of its citizenry. The conclusion of Exhibit Columbus is that heritage is at its best when it takes the form of vision and not nostalgia. And so now Aaron Hetrick and Will Marquez will tell you about the school project. Um, before I get into the school project, I, I want to um, really extend a quick thanks to the people that have been attending uh, this week. I've been introducing high school students to variety of people and um, that is an intimidating thing for a teen to experience. So those of you who have um, shaken hands with my high school students, I just want to thank you for your warmth and your kindness in, on, on their part, so thank you. <laughs> Education is a part of Exhibit Columbus. Um, we were reminded um, by Michelangelo Sabatino and Alexander Lang and a few others yesterday that there is a precedence within this community to rally behind education as a way of making Columbus a better place to live, work, and learn. Exhibit Columbus honors that community value. Additionally, we aim to build on the city's legacy of generating innovative ideas to make great things, and this is how. We begin by capitalizing on the movement of making that is bubbling up around the world. You might feel the movement when you see examples of collaboration and experimentation, when you see learning happening outside of classrooms and in the real world or happening in the digital world. And you might feel this movement of making occur when people are solving problems and sharing their knowledge. The drive to make is and has long been a part of Columbus, especially when it comes to manufacturing and building. We also know that BCSC schools incorporate design education into their curriculum. The relationship exhibit Columbus has with students is not just about cluing them into the buildings around them, though we are doing that, but it is also about offering tools and inspiration to support the youth of Columbus as they become the next makers and innovators which mirrors the spirit of those who changed the Columbus landscape decades, decades ago, and also includes the next generation in the narrative of Columbus that is being written right now. We do this by making resources and knowledge available to them in as many places as we can. A recent survey of job openings in Indiana found that 550 of them required computer-aided engineering design or 3D printing skills. There is a case to be made for getting kids involved in new technologies early and often from an economic standpoint as well as for the reason of simply letting students explore their interests and understand what it takes to take an idea and turn it into a reality. 
This is what happens when we offer Exhibit Columbus sponsored opportunities around the community that invite kids, parents, and teachers to play, tinker, and make. Exhibit Columbus knows that we cannot do this on our own. We are not unique in our mission, and we do not have to be the ones who do it all. So in the Columbus way, we will work with a network of families, students, youth organizations, experts, and businesses to share knowledge, skills, and resources to create fun, engaging events and long-term collaboration. How do we know if this education plan works? We do it. Exhibit Columbus has spent the last year understanding how Columbus schools do build and make. In addition to observing, our education team has also worked directly with middle and high school students on a handful of projects. You heard about one in the last session, and on Thursday, many of you met a high school senior who is working with us to combine architecture and new technology to develop a walking phone tour of Columbus landmarks. Next year, you will see the result of another of our efforts. In addition to the Miller Prize competition winners, Washington Street artists, and university architecture and design students, a high school team will design and exhibit their work at Exhibit Columbus. And to turn a dot into a photo, they will be doing this at the LHP Historic Post Office at the north end of Washington Street. As, as I've said, Exhibit Columbus cannot do this on our own. So we have connected with Kelly Wilson at the IU Center for Art and Design, who has formed a group of experts to work with the students. This advisory group includes Jay Kim with Indiana University, who has expertise in 3D digital modeling and digital fabrication. Randy Royer, a lo local art landscape architect working with Hitchcock Design Group, who is here in the audience, and I'm going to have him wave so that you can see him later. <laughs> and Travis Perry, a local residential and commercial contractor. Using the connections that we've been building this past year with schools, we asked teachers, administrators, and students from across BCSC to share this opportunity to become part of Exhibit Columbus, a part of the Exhibit Columbus exhibition. And the students who came to the table represent all three Columbus high schools. One of them is here today. Her name is Jane Phillips. I will not make her come to sta the stage, but I will ask Jane to stand up. She has been attending the symposium um, these past two days, and her eyes have been wide, and she's very <laughs> excited. So we're very excited to have Jane on the design team. So last month, Jane and other students interested in art, design, and architect architecture spent an afternoon every weekend working with the advisory group to learn, build skills, connect with other students across the corporation, and experts in the field. Over, uh, through the rest of the year, they will be working to develop final plans and models for this collaborative project. And from there, Jane, as part of her high school senior project, senior um, graduation project requirement, will work with the advisory group to fabricate and install the piece during the exhibition. We are incredibly excited to have high school work on display with the other talent at the exhibition next year and to celebrate them as the future makers of Columbus. We hope that participation in this project will be something that BCSC students look forward to every exhibition year, and that perhaps we will see the involvement of more partners and students grow with each iteration of Exhibit Columbus. But our education work will not end at the close of, of the exhibition, and I will let my partner, Will Marquez, tell you more. Thank you, Erin. Uh, I really appreciate that. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, many of you know me, of course, through design uh, and architecture, uh, but also most of you uh, also know about my passion for equity and education. Uh, in fact, I, it's hard for me to really see those two things apart, uh, design and education, 
architecture, and equity, uh, those four words are things that I think live uh, in my own world on a daily basis. And I'm excited to be uh, part of this team and in Columbus uh, over the next year. I've been asked to take four minutes to frame the educational pathway for Exhibit Columbus moving into uh, 2017. I appreciate the opportunity to do so, especially in front of my colleagues, uh, my friends. Please raise your hands real quick if you are an educator uh, of youth in this community or outside this community. Raise your hand. Okay. Leave your hands up if you're a high school teacher. Do we have any high school teachers here today? An aide or an instructor? A parent? An elementary school teacher? A mentor? A scout leader? A counselor or a concerned citizen or volunteer? Uh, I know that most people probably should have their hands up by now. <laughs> not all of you. I want to thank and express uh, my appreciation to the educators, of course, and people, some of which are who, in this, who are in this room, who have taken up this challenge and are committed to being change agents and stewards to the educational legacy and educational advancements that Columbus has made uh, on behalf of its children and its community. That's important. I believe that. I believe that there are those of us in this room, okay, who are honest, that know more can be done, okay? To bridge this idea of creativity and digital literacy. I believe that too. The image that you see here above is of course a sketch by a 14-year-old, a, a very creative 14-year-old from Heron High School. Uh, he draws miraculously his own comics. In fact, he's very talented. We would have never known about this skill uh, most of this young man's ideas live in his sketchbook. But when he came to the design bank to work with us, uh, Simi had the ability to move his ideas uh, beyond his sketchbook. And you could see the model uh, there of the robot. Simi imagined this robot uh, that had rocket boosters, would solve STEM problems, with four other scientists, uh, et cetera, et cetera. These are the things that are in his head. And it gets me excited to put the type of tools that Simi needs uh, to get his ideas advanced out of his sketchbook and, of course, into what I say are actual objects, which I think have tremendous energy uh, to them. Okay. <clears throat> Those of you who know me personally will understand why I've used uh, Tessa's quote here which is great, you know, it's, it sort of talks about the idea as educators and parents about our responsibility of creating platforms. Platforms for, of course, things to happen on top of, and some of those things are happening at our CSA schools, but they could happen more, okay? I wanna make sure that we understand that those things are happening, but I'm figuring out a way to work with this team uh, into the next year is how we can make it better and how we can do things better. It gets to the core, at least that quote gets to the core, uh, of why this exhibit is happening and the importance of not just building buildings, but of expanding culture, of building platforms for knowledge. The ideas and projects that Aaron just recently talked about help us get to the root of why uh, we've all come here today. And that is that we all believe that design has the ability to change the world, okay? Or cure a common headache which is a stretch, but maybe it can. We are all stewards and educators of changing the life outcomes of students. We all need to be responsible for changing the life outcomes of our students. And people like Simi and thousands of other students just like him, okay, or like Jay, who also has ambitions uh, of being in the design field. Having just joined this team, it's important that we have a clear way forward Okay, over the next year, okay? And all the work begins today, okay? We wanna receive and embrace the many volunteers and partners and mentors who will want to be part of this over the next year. So this idea of what our plan is, it's about this. It's about expanding the network, okay? How do we connect people who already have a yearning to be connected? That's important for us over the next year. This idea of increased accessibility, 
and I have it written here, equity, equity, equity. Not equality. There's a difference. And this idea of adding to legacy, how do we build, again, on all that Columbus is and uh, desires to become? So without getting into too much detail, I think these three things will be the pillars on how we advance forward. And again, we look forward to the number of partners and volunteers in Columbus uh, working on this very exciting adventure. Thank you. Well, thanks, folks. We didn't hear from uh, Brooke and, and uh, uh, Jonathan, but they're integral parts of the team. Again, I just want to thank all of the curatorial team. As you can see, um, what a joy I have to work with such a great team to pull off this exhibition next year. Um, I'm really excited to see what happens. And um, I want to thank, though, all of the Miller Prize finalists from traveling really around the country and in some cases around the world to come uh, be a part of the inaugural symposium. It's really an honor to have you. And I was so thrilled um, to sit in all of the sessions. Sure, I, had a, I was always up talking, but I had a lot of fun um, listening to everything. And I think some new sort of themes emerged. You know, I think this idea of the Midwest that Josh and Janice were talking about and the importance of the value of good design for communities are really starting to congeal in a new way, and I think we're going to have some physical evidence of that next year. So I'm really excited about that. Um, thanks also to you for coming. Uh, I appreciate having so many people here over the past two days, two and a half days, uh, to listen and to learn with us. Uh, thank you. I'd like to thank First Christian Church for allowing us to use this amazing facility. It's really been an honor to be here. Thanks to all the volunteers um, who did all the work, and um, as I said, Brooke, who coordinated much of it, and with Jillian Keller, uh, Cassidy Galbraith, and Aaron Hetrick. And so, uh, without further ado, this is the end of the first symposium. I invite you out to the Library Plaza to celebrate with us over a drink, and I think we're going to have um, some posters being made out there that you can take home with you to remind you to come back on August 27th, 2017. Thank you very much.